I mean, you did this 40 days ago. You took an action um, around that time, and you were hoping that the Europeans would somehow uh, persuade the United States that there must be some ability for you to have the economic side of the equation to your nuclear commitments. Um, that hasn't happened. The United States, if anything, is more determined to squeeze Iran economically. The Europeans have not been able to. Just there, your atomic energy spokesman saying this 20 day threat to uh, increase stockpiles and the level of enrichment is to hopefully get Europe to do something about it. But they're not. So are you playing with fire? There is a confusion maybe here. We announced 40 days ago that if, uh, in fact, uh, we, have, uh, we have decided to suspend two of the measures uh, designed in the JCPOA. We are not committed anymore to the level designed by the JCPOA. But we said that we give you 60 days if you rectify the problems and you would, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, implement your commitments, Iran can roll back, in fact, these suspensions. So but the fact is that they're, that they're not. The Europeans have not been able to. Do you know something no. that I don't know? And the Americans continue to ratchet up their pressure. What you have just done yes. has been met with the following response from the United States, that the plans to exceed these internationally agreed curbs amounts to nuclear blackmail and must be met with increased international pressure. That is from the White House today. So my question is, are you playing with fire here? Because you know where they stand, and you know where the Saudi Arabians stand and where the UAE stands. They want to squeeze you, and it looks like you are playing into their hands. These policies by the others are not new policies. We have mentioned that we have an agreement, which is the JCPOA. Otherwise, uh, either we would implement this agreement in full, all parties are committed to their obligations, uh, or we would uh, facing with the partial agreement, if you agree that there is a partial agreement, Iran is, is in fact entitled to suspend some of the measures until the situation is clear. So uh, the question is that it's very funny that the United States and this administration, which has characterized the JCPOA as the worst agreement in the history, now they are expecting that Iran would be fully committed with this agreement. If it is a funny agreement, if it is an, the worst deal ever made in the history, how come that you expect Iran would be fully committed to this agreement? So we have, uh, uh, we have announced very clearly that either we would have a full commitment to the uh, agreement or uh, as designed in the JCPOA itself, uh, this agreement can be partially right. implemented. Okay, so that's all pretty bureaucratic. Now, here's the real stuff. There are attacks on tankers in the Persian Gulf, in the Gulf of Oman. You are being blamed for it. Iran is, some, is being blamed for being responsible for it. And let us just take your own government's words. Your own foreign minister, Javad Sarif, has said that we will respond to what he calls economic warfare against us. In the past, President Rouhani and your top officials have said that uh, we could strangle the flow of Persian Gulf oil from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, Iraq, and the UAE if the US embargoes Iranian oil. You've said that. You've said that you are in control of the Straits of Hormuz and you can stop it. So now you're being blamed for stopping it. This is, in fact, what uh, Pre uh, Secretary of State Pompeo has said just this weekend. It's unmistakable what happened here. These were attacks by the Islamic Republic of Iran on commercial shipping, on the freedom of navigation, with a clear intent uh, to deny transit through the strait. This was on the Gulf of Oman side of the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, there's no doubt. The intelligence community has uh, lots of data, lots of evidence. The, uh, the world will come to see much of it, uh, but the American people should rest assured we have high confidence with respect to who conducted these attacks, as well as a half a dozen other attacks throughout the world over the past 40 days. So what do you say to that? I have two points. First of all, is that they are misusing the uh, statements made before by our president and the foreign minister. We said that if Iran would not be allowed to export oil from the Persian Gulf, we would take measures to ensure that other countries also cannot uh, do the same. But we are not at that stage yet. No, but you're getting to that stage because they're if trying to sanction all your oil exports. Sanction is a different... Uh, I mean, matter. squeeze them, prevent so, them, stop, zero. So if, if it would be zero and we would not be able to export our oils 
uh, transported from the region, that would be a new situation, and we have the courage to announce very clearly that we would not allow the others also to do the same. But we are not at that stage. The second point is that, in fact, uh, the Americans are, are telling us that they have assessments, that they, they have intelligence. The question is that what this assessment is based on. You can have your assessment, I have your assessment. The, the people on the streets can have their own assessments. Assessment is reliable when it is based on, on evidence, on the facts. We have not been facing with any kind of uh, evidences or facts till now, and we would be delighted, as, as the experts, international experts, have called for the United States, that they would show and they would, uh, in fact, publish the complete footage of what they have before the incident, after the incident, and not really to publish only a distorted... So you're talking about this, this, this uh, video that we're going to this play video, right now, exactly. which President Trump publicly spoke about, saying that, of sure. course, it's about... Of course, it's you. Um, basically, this, is, this boat is meant to be your military, your navy, going to collect an unexploded mine of some sort on that boat, and, and then to dash off with it. Now, you deny it, they say it's you. Answer me this question, Ambassador. Your defense secretary on the Supreme Council with Ayatollah Khamenei, Ali Shamkhani says, we are in charge of security in the Persian Gulf and around the St Straits of Hormuz. We can maintain security. If that's the case, who is doing this? We we are living in our region. This is part of our country, the state of Hormuz, and we are, in fact, uh, entitled to keep the security of, of this part of the, of the world. But you know that there are so many ships coming and going through this, uh, uh, in fact, this uh, part of the world, and the first country who is very uh, uh, sensitive to the security and peace of this uh, part of the world is Iran, because we have the longest shores uh, in the Persian Gulf. So we are very determined to help everybody if they have uh, uh, proofs, if they have I intelligence or information. We would be delighted that those information, intelligence, would be shared at the international level because this world is different from the uh, older world when the, the big powers can make decisions behind the doors. Now the media and the international uh, research organizations and the international people have the interest, uh, legitimate interest, to know about the, the, fact, the facts and factual events. So, we so what was delighted. that boat doing alongside that tanker? And again, I mean, you, you haven't actually answered me, but do you know who might be able to get through Iran's security apparatus there and cause... I mean, we've seen explosions on these tankers. That's a fact. Who could be doing it? I don't know. We should see who are the interests, who have the interest to disrupt the security in the region. You know that there are uh, countries in the region and beyond the region who have invested heavily billions of billions of dollars to trap the United States into a conflict with Iran, a military conflict with Iran. They are, in fact, very determined not to allow this project would be a futile project because they feel that maybe President Trump is not is 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 not determined to go uh, uh, as as much as necessary. Maybe he doesn't want to go into a war. So there are elements in the region and beyond that, in fact, they would uh, create a situation that United States would be dragged so, into. A, and, a and you're talking about what your foreign minister calls the B team: Bolton, bin Salman. Bibi Netanyahu, that's what you're saying now, right? That is a very real scenario that we are facing. So here now is what a very influential Republican senator says, Tom Cotton, about the consequences of all of this. Yes. Unprovoked attacks on commercial shipping warrant a retaliatory military strike against the Islamic Republic of Iran. Going back to President Washington and all the way down to President Trump, the fastest way to get the fire and fury of the U.S. military unleashed on you is to interfere with the freedom of navigation on the open seas and in the air. That's exactly what Iran is doing in one of the world's most important strategic choke points. The president has the authorization to act to defend American interests. So they're using an internationally recognized um, statement of defending international peace and security and defending against a threat to that. Where do you think this is headed? 
Uh, unfortunately, we are heading towards a confrontation, which is very serious for everybody in the region. You believe a, a military confrontation? I don't know, a military or maybe I mean, Cotton also military. said, yes, partial. Cotton also said that potentially strike, limited strike on a, on, a, on a target in the Persian Gulf. I don't know about the strategy of the U.S. on this, but I am sure that this is a scenario that some people are very forcefully working on it, that they would drag the United States into a confrontation. I hope that the people in, the, in Washington would be very careful not to underestimate the Iranian determination that if they would be wrongly uh, entering into a conflict, they would be very sorry about that, because we are fully prepared, uh, determined by our government and people, our armed forces, that we would not be submitting to the, that, uh, to the will of the United States. Let's, let me uh, tell you very frankly that, in fact, the United States is asking for negotiations. Negotiations should be done at the, uh, in fact, the voluntary determination of the, of the, of the uh, all sides to a negotiations. You cannot force any country to enter into a negotiations. What we want from the U.S. is to be a normal country, not to interfere with the Iranian relationship, economic relationship with the other countries. They are th threatening all countries in the region and beyond not to enter into economic agreement, the trade agreement, and this is a kind of economic terrorism that we rightfully, in fact, uh, 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 call it. United States uh, should not be uh, pressurizing Iran into a negotiations. United States should decide to be aside from the relationship between Iran and other countries.